good night all, and welcome to the third night of the sevens, a study in the book of Revelation. I am Denise Clue, and in the Queen's Faith Temple studio with me tonight is Dr. Waitlin Williams, and together we are your hosts for tonight. Now let me welcome our first time viewers. If you're joining us for the very first time, it is with sadness and regret that I have to tell you the topics that you missed. And oh, how our hearts burned within us when we listened to them. Now, can you imagine if every time you wanted, desired, or needed something or someone, your access was always granted? Or there's a blessing in exile. No matter what you're going through, you come out pure as gold, like an egg in its original state that's placed in hot boiling water and emerged hard and intact together. Or maybe you had felt like you lost everything. God will never leave us empty, you see. He will replace everything that you've lost. So if he asks you to put something down, that's because he's asking you to pick up something even greater. So welcome, first-time viewers. Now, I have an exercise for you. I want you to get your glass. Have a glass of water. Inhale. Exhale. And be ready for the ride tonight. And please, don't you miss another night. And we have been blessed to have faithful viewers on Zoom and on YouTube each night. If you have never missed a night, type never missed a night or N-man in the chat. And if you missed just one night, if you miss a night, you can type missed a night or man in the chat. In any case, we are deeply appreciative of your presence and your support. Please share the link with a friend. Give us a like, subscribe, and share the blessings you've been experiencing. So welcome, everyone. I see some people are still logging in onto YouTube. So come on in. We have Bev Blake. We have Satania Angus. We have Claudette Henry. We have a lot of people coming on. Bring your friends on. It's not too late. So welcome them to enjoy the blessings we have been experiencing here in Sevens. So welcome, everyone. I hope tonight you'll have a life-changing experience as you worship God with us. So why don't we invite the presence of the Lord in our midst? Let us bow our heads as we pray. Oh, great God, what in heaven, as we gather together here online to study your words from the book of Revelation, please forgive us of all of our sins that we might have committed against you and empty us of all manner of evil and selfish thoughts and fill us with your righteousness that our hearts and minds will be in a reverent readiness to receive your words. Lord, we thank you for the breath of life and the privilege to partake in this evangelistic series. Please hasten the steps on the fingers of those that will be joining us uh, tonight on the service, dear Father. Also, God, please, Lord, we pray for those participants that will be on the platform tonight. May you grant us your spirit, dear Father, that we do your work according to your will. Guide our minds, dear God, as we speak and as we, as, as we do the, your will, dear Father. Also, um, God, please protect the instrument that we will be using from the wicked one so that this service will be trouble-free tonight, that we will enjoy your service and that lives may be saved God, and ready for your kingdom. Lord, you are a mighty God, and we please and we, and we praise your holy name for all that you have, been, you have, all that you have done and still doing for us, dear God. We pray, God, especially for the young ones, for the children, dear Father. May you encourage them. May you lead them to, to, to this service tonight, dear God, that they will hear your preaching and hear your words and turn their mind and hearts to you. Have your own way now, dear God, as we minister, as you minister to us, dear Father, to your man servant. These we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. 
anxiety can shorten a person's life. Researchers examined data on more than 60,000 people from 10 large cohort studies in England and found that even very mild depression or anxiety raised the risk of death from heart disease by 29% and all-cause death by 20%. That's a fact. But there's hope. A randomized controlled trial investigated the effect of prayer on depression, anxiety, positive emotions, and salivary cortisol levels. Participants receiving the prayer intervention showed significant improvements in depression and anxiety, as well as increases of daily spiritual experiences and optimism compared to controls. Psalms 55:22 tells us to cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. The Let us pray. Righteous and eternal Father, the one who created heaven and earth, the one who breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Almighty you are. We want to thank you for having granted us this privilege to be alive this evening. We ask, Lord, as we come, that you will wash us, that you will remove anything and everything that will end our prayers and our praise to us sent to you this evening. And give us a special anointing of your Holy Spirit, that we will not listen with our natural ears, but we will listen to the ears of the Spirit, your word as it's been spoken to us tonight. We pray for those that are joining us on this platform. We know, Lord, that you are seeking something better. We know that the world has nothing to offer at this time. Many of the world are confused. But tonight we know that through your man's servant, through the book of Revelation, there's a word for somebody tonight. And so we ask, for oh God, that your Holy Spirit will speak peace to that person, to that individual who's struggling financially, who's struggling emotionally, who is struggling, Lord, because they, they don't know who to turn to. But tonight, may your Holy Spirit remind him that there's a God who cares for them and that he will see them through. Take control of every situation tonight, every home, every church family. Bring them together in unity that they will come to know you, Lord, through this service during the night. And that men and women will come in their ways to you. They'll come in their heart to you. They'll come in their children to you. Spouse will be coming to you. Others will be saying, yes, we are ready to go all the way with Jesus in the water grave of baptism. We ask, for oh God, that you will provide the financial resources that they need, that you will provide the physical resources that they need, the love and the support that they need. Give them something, Lord, that they will never forget as a fountain of living water. Give them hope, Lord, in this world of crisis. May they realize that there's a God to be served and there's a hell to be shunned. Take over everything on this platform tonight, oh God. May at the end of this service, we will declare it was good for us to be here. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Sister Clue, who do we have as our speaker tonight? Well, our speaker is Dr. Gregory A. Carroll. Dr. Carroll, yes, he is our own pastor. You know what I like about him? He's very creative, very practical, and very dynamic. He is. But Sister Clue, you know what? I've been, I've been enjoying the topic so far, but tonight I think I have a little concern about this topic. You know, the topic is that God is smelling me. I mean, I'm very concerned about that. I don't want God to smell me. I mean, I had my shower before I came on. I mean, I even brought some extra soap and deodorant and, and rags because I don't want God to smell me, Sister Clue. Hmm. You know, Dr. Williams, be, be anxious for nothing. Let's not get too anxious about the topic. It, it, it bothers me too. But this is what I'm thinking, right? Seeing that, um, we, we don't know. Is this a smell or, or is it a stench? I mean, is it a sniffing or is it suspecting? Is it stinking or is it sweet, savoring smell? I mean, I don't know where he's going with this. But this is the thing. Let's stay with the preacher. As he takes us down that road, 
that, that ancient city on the west coast of Asia Minor, where major trading is what they did, the early center of Christianity, the place called Smyrna. And I am thinking, Dr. Williams, that in Smyrna, I mean, they were not as modern as we were. I mean, I'm sure they didn't have showers and towels and sweet fragrance soap and shower gel. So maybe the preacher is talking about them. Maybe the Smyrnaeans are the ones that God smelled, but definitely not us modern Christians. So let's see what he's going to tell us. Let's take our Bibles in hand and follow him on this journey in Revelation. And, and maybe we're not there, you know, because we are modernized. We, I'm certainly, you know, we don't smell. Well, I'm going to fasten my seatbelt and listen to the preacher because the series is very interesting. I don't want to miss a bite. Why don't you call a friend and have them join us? It's not too late. No, it isn't. As we travel in the book of Revelation and take a look at the occurrence at the Church of Smyrna.
Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Your
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Let the children of God say amen and amen. Tonight you believe and you know for a fact that the Lamb is worthy. The Lamb has overcome. Just let me hear you say amen. Put it in the chat. Let the world know that you are here tonight representing the star of the book of Re Revelation. He's the one you're repping tonight. He's the one you're repping tonight. You're not repping anything or anyone else. It's all about the star of the book of Revelation. His name is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Ah, wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting God, the fairest of 10,000. Will the church of the living God say amen? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening on Zoom land. Good evening over there in YouTube country. Good evening. Evening, I greet you all in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Thank you for connecting. What a joy it is to come into your homes on tonight. We thank you for allowing us in. We thank you for planning to be here, uh, for planning to, to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. If it is one thing I know, Dr. Williams, Sister Clue, Elder Gordon, if it is one thing I know, God, God, he always rewards those who seek after him. Will you say or type amen in the presence of the Lord? Is there somebody online tonight who you, you came to church because you need a blessing from God, because you know for a fact that God rewards those who seek after him. You showed up tonight because you want a blessing. Just put it in the chat. I want a blessing. You want that blessing. You came here to claim that which is yours in the name of Jesus. And that's why I showed up today. Praise the Lord. I showed up because I want to hear from God. I know that God has a message for his people in the uh, last days. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So family, let us get straight to work tonight. Amen. Sister Sylvia, I see you. You want your blessing, child of God. I want mine as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. What I love, what I love family about this, um, this, this series is that the engagement is so high. The engagement is so high. I, I see you, uh, Sister J. I see you. Uh, I, I, I want God to bless me tonight. We stand in need of something tonight. Our subject, uh, family, our subject is God is smelling you. God is smelling you. And I know tonight that this 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 theme, this caption has, has been generating a lot of discussion and talk on, on, on social media. I know, I know, I know. I've, I've been monitoring the discussions. I say praise the Lord. Uh, uh, but I promise you, if you just wait it out, you're going to see how God unravels this thing in such a beautiful way to God be the glory. As usual, we want you to travel with your Bibles night after night, because remember what we said from the launch to seven, we are going to allow scripture to interpret scripture. And as such, it is critical that you show up night after night with the word of God. Somebody say, type, say, or type amen. Show up with the word of God. As a matter of fact, right where you are, if you're on Zoom, if you're on Zoom, I can see you. Just wave your Bible. It doesn't matter if it's electronic or or, or, or the hard copy. Just wave your Bible. Amen. You wave that iPhone, somebody. Amen. I see you. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Let the world know that you have the word of God with you. And one thing I've come to know, family, that what that what makes the word of God, the word of God is not the format. It's not electronic versus hard copy. It's the wonderful words of life. So brother, right, it doesn't matter where you're reading from, as long as you read, will you say amen? As long as you read the word of God, that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So Revelation chapter two, verses eight through 11, please read with me in the the presence of the Lord tonight. Pause what you're doing. Just read the word of God with me. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. The Bible says, and to the angel, <clears throat> beg your pardon, uh, of the church of Smyrna, write, these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich 
And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Lord have mercy of the synagogue of Satan. Do not fear those things the Bible says, which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil uh, is about to throw some of you into prison. Mm, that you may be tested, the Bible says, and you will have tribulation. How long? The Bible says you will have tribulation 10 days. But be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes, and here comes the promise, uh, children of God, here comes the promise. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Will you type or say amen? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you tonight asking you for the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. I pray, dear Father, that we will receive clarity tonight. I pray we will uh, uh, extract a message of hope from the church of Smyrna. We pray as usual, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength. And my Redeemer, let the church of the living God say, Amen. God, 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 God is smelling you. God is smelling you. Uh, help me preach this thing tonight. Put it in the chat. God, God is smelling you. We are now uh, in the church of, of Smyrna, uh, AD 100 through 313. But before we even set sail, I must share with you, I was browsing Instagram the, the other day and I saw a story pop up on my Instagram account and uh, on it family, on it Dr. Williams, I saw uh, two dogs, two dogs, uh, angry dogs, ferocious dogs. Uh, I think they were, were uh, one was a, a, a Doberman pincher or, or a German shepherd and they were separated by a gate and one was on the other side of the gate uh, uh, where the house was and the other one was on the outside where the street was and they were aggressively barking at each other family. They were going at it. They were uh, drooling from the mouth and you would think that if they they had the opportunity, they would literally destroy each other if they had a chance. But guess what, family? The gate was slowly open. The gate was slowly open, and you wouldn't imagine what took place. The same dogs that appeared as if they were getting ready to destroy each other after the barrier was removed and the gate was open. All they did was to their like statues just looking at each other. Oh family, you could hear cr crickets. Uh, uh, they were just in silence. They were not attacking each other. They were just silent. But then guess what family? The owner closed the gate one more time close the gate one more time and as soon as the gate was closed uh, they were at it again they were barking you would think that they were ready to destroy each other and then the owner opened the gate and the same thing happened family silence silence and 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 and, and some of you saw it I know some of you saw it on Instagram and Although this video undoubtedly elicited uh, some humor, I, I felt spiritually convicted when I watched this video. And, and, and here's why. Here's why. It made me wonder in a spiritual sense, family. Is my bark greater than my bite? It, it, it made me wonder, uh, in a spiritual sense, will my future fear be stronger than my present faith-filled proclamation? It, it made me wonder, is my, is my self 
self-preservation instinct stronger than my allegiance to the Lamb of God. Amen. Let, let me come a little closer. Will I fail like Peter when I'm caught in 4K? As the young people would say, am I going to fail like Peter when I'm surrounded by accusers saying, I saw you on YouTube preaching Jesus, the one you call the star of the the book of Revelation. I saw you. I saw you. Are you going to stand on the Lord's side or are, are you going to renounce the name of Jesus Christ? Because family, when the going gets tough, it makes you wonder, will your bark be greater than your bite? But can I tell you, family, can I tell you that it was not so for the church of Smyrna? It was not so family. Smyrna, Smyrna, Smyrna. Smyrna, ah, their bite was greater than their bark. Smyrna, ah, let me just give you a little context of what's happening in, in, in at the church of Smyrna. It is now AD uh, 100 to 330. That's a time period for Smyrna. The gospel, context is critical. Gospel, the gospel is being preached far and wide and thousands of converts are flooding to the church of Smyrna. Smyrna. The church is growing and the gospel is being preached far and wide. And because of this family, because of this, Satan unleashes a storm of persecution. But it's interesting, family. It's interesting because, because even though there was persecution, even though Christians were being martyred, the, the church of the living God still grew. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to give God praise because the church continues continue to grow. And the most striking feature when you study Smyrna, the most striking feature about this church is that this church receives no reproof from God. It is one of only two churches of the seven that receives no rebuke from God, only commendation. And here is why. I believe, family, that the persecution had purified the church. Are you hearing me, family? The persecution had purified the church. And maybe that's why the message to Smyrna is the shortest of the seven. They were beyond rebuke because persecution had purified the church. Can I tell you two features of persecution tonight? Persecution, number one, it separates. And number two, it presses. Help me put it in the chat. It separates and it presses. Persecution, it separates and it presses. It separates nominal Christians, Christians who are only Christians by name only. It separates nominal Christians from those who have a genuine relationship with Jesus. And isn't it true that it presses? Persecution has the ability to press you to your knees because you know that during these challenging times, during these trying times, all of your help comes from God and God alone. So so it presses you to your knees. So family, this time period for the church of Smyrna was a time of intense persecution under Emperor Diocletian, who was a, the Roman emperor during the period of AD 284 to 305. Family, I'm giving you the, these dates so you can verify the authenticity of this account on tonight. And what made things difficult for these Christians uh, 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 in, in Smyrna family was the fact that the city was the center for emperor worship. It was what? It was the center for emperor worship. It was also home of the shrine to the goddess Nemesis. So the society was deep in idolatry. Worship to the emperor and worship to, to inanimate objects, idols. Family, at this time, emperor worship, it was mandatory. It was what? 
It was mandatory. You didn't have a chance to get out of it. It was mandatory. And Ranko Stefanovic in his commentary on Revelation tells us that once a year, every Roman citizen was obligated to perform the religious duty of burning incense on the altar to the Godhead of Caesar. And they were then issued a certificate. But I want to say thank God for the Smyrnaean Christians because they declared boldly, keep your certificate, keep your incense, but we will worship God and God alone. Somebody ought to shout amen in the presence of the Lord. And there is going to come a time, one more time, in the presence, uh, in our experience, in, in these last days where we too will have a choice to make. And I pray that every Christian, every child of God on the sacred platform in the sacred space will plan in advance that your decision will be to shout like the Smyrnian Christians. You can keep the world, but I'm going to have and serve my Jesus. Somebody ought to kick out an amen in the presence of the Lord. Appreciate family. During these times, any Christian who refused to worship the emperor faced the possibility of execution. So the remnant Christians of Smyrna, and I say remnant because persecution had purified the church. Remember I told you before, it had purified the church and only the committed Christians who were grounded on the rock, Christ Jesus, only those committed Christians remained in the church. Let me tell you again, family, persecution has the power to separate the wheat from the tears. Persecution is that which removes the dross. Are you hearing me, family? So the remnant Christians of Smyrna were saying, I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever my lot may be, where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I will follow thee. I will follow thee in persecution. I will follow thee in famine. Where thou leadest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I will follow thee. And secondly, family, there was a large and strong Jewish population. We are giving you the context for Smyrna. There was a strong Jewish population that were very hostile toward the Christians of Smyrna. And they joined forces with the pagans in hating and persecuting the remnant church of God. They slandered them before the local government and they were charged with being cannibals all because they took the Lord's supper. They told the local government that they were literally eating flesh when they were partaking of the Lord's supper. They slandered the name of the Christians at Smyrna, listen to the preacher tonight. Don't you be surprised when in 2022, when you too decide that come what may, I'm going to stand up for Jesus. Don't you be surprised when you find people slandering you, when you find people bearing false witness against you and trying to malign your character. Listen to the preacher. The enemy has no new tricks. And the higher you climb with Jesus, the the more he will unleash his old playbook. New level, same devil. He's going to come at you the way how he came at Christians of old. And I want to let you know, I know as a matter of fact that some of you know what I'm talking about because you're experiencing persecution on the job. You're experiencing it at school. You're experiencing it in the neighborhood all because you're standing up for Jesus, but it's the same devil. And sometimes Times persecution is a sign not that you're forsaken, but it's a sign that you're on the right side with God. So continue to stand your ground in Jesus' name. So they faced opposition because they refused emperor worship and because the Jews joined forces with the pagans against them. But despite threat, and opposition on these two fronts, family. The Christians of Smyrna decided that they would rather die than renounce the name of Jesus Christ. And as a result, Diocletian intensified his persecution of the church. 
And it was at this time that their minister, their first minister, Polycarp, who, who associated with John himself, Polycarp was, was martyred in the first half of the second century. Oh, family, you, you, you need to read upon this when you have some time. Many of these Christians of Smyrna, they were arrested. Their assets were seized. They were thrown to wild animals. They were fed to half-starved lions in the Col Colosseums. They were hacked to death. Uh, many of them were held and, 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 and hot lead was poured down their throats. They were burned at the stake. Are you listening to me, family? Many of them were tied between horses, feet tied at one end, hands tied at the other, uh, other end, and, 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 and the horses were whipped, and they would rip, literally rip uh, these Christians apart. Listen to me, family. It was a trying time for the Christians uh, 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 at Smyrna, but 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 I want to let you know what one of the church far fathers said. His name is Tertullian. He said that the blood of the martyrs were seed for the gospel. And what that means, family, was that the more Christians they killed, I said the more Christians they killed, is the more the church grew. Ah, the blood of the seed, the blood of the saints were was seed for the gospel. And I know that there's coming a time in the future when this will happen one more time and I want you to be determined and be prepared that come what may you will stand your ground you will stand for Jesus you will never compromise in order to be recognized you will die faithfully if it comes to that and I believe that Jesus will empower you for the final crisis somebody ought to say amen so family this was the conversation context for the letter to Smyrna. This was the context. It was a time of intense persecution on the Emperor Diocletian of Rome. And, 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 and now, 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 now everything makes sense. When, when, when Jesus said, we just read it, everything now makes sense. When Jesus said, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna, right, these things says the first and the last who was dead and who came to life. And note, beloved, note the references to death and resurrection in this passage. Note the references to death and resurrection. A, a, a number of times uh, God references death and resurrection as if speaking to Smyrna, saying, Smyrna, I know what you're going through. I know that you have placed everything on the altar of sacrifice from me, but I want to let you know that I walked where you walked. I have been where you have been. I have still conquered death and the grave, so my resurrection guarantees your resurrection. It continues by saying, I know your works. I know your tribu tribulation. I know your poverty. And, and, and it's interesting because the Greek word tokia used here means having nothing at all. So Jesus speaks to them as if he he knows them. He knows them. He knows everything about them. Everything that they're going through, God knew about it. He said, I know your poverty, uh, but you are rich. Uh, you are rich. You are rich because of Matthew chapter 6 uh, verses 19 through 21 where the Bible says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in in heaven where neither moth nor rust can corrupt. Are you listening to me? The Bible says you are rich because you sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And because of that, all these things will be added unto you. The letter to the Smyrnians continue by saying, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews, but are not. As a matter of fact, they belong to the synagogue of Satan. Remember, I shared with you the context that the Jews were against the Christians of Smyrna. They joined forces with the pagans to persecute and execute these Christians.
Christians. So God knew what he was talking about even before it happened. I know the blasphemy of those who say they're Jews but are not, but they belong to the synagogue of Satan. I know these so-called believers, they're going to sell you out. I know you're going to be betrayed, but do not fear, the Bible says. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation. How long? You will have tribulation, the Bible says, 10 days, but be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. Oh, family, here is a, 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 another uh, a prophetic declaration that we need to uh, dive into. Uh, and this is just amazing, family. This is just amazing. And I, I pray that you have pen and paper so we can talk about this uh, and you can share it with somebody else. The Bible says you will have tribulation. How long? You will have it 10 days. Ah, family, there is something uh, uh, in, in the Bible called the day year principle. And this is a very important key to unlocking the prophecies in Revelation. In Bible prophecy, a day is equal to a year. Are you hearing me, family? One day is equal to a year. Remember, we're allowing scripture to to interpret scripture. And that's why we see um, some script scriptural evidence of that on your screens right now. Ezekiel 4 verse 6. We see a day is given for each year. Are you hearing me, family? Uh, one day is equal, equal to uh, a, a year. And we're seeing here that the Bible says you will have tribulation. How long? You will have tribulation 10 days, 10 days, which means means that you're going to have uh, a tribulation uh, 10 years according to the day year principle. And so uh, according to this principle family, it, it is prophesied, it was prophesied that the intense period of persecution would have lasted 10 years. And, and now the question is, did it really last 10 years? Mm, did it? Uh, let me tell you family, it did. It lasted exactly 10 years as the Bible prophesied it uh, uh, before it even happened. 10 years from AD 303 to 313. 10 years. And it ended with Emperor Constantine. Emperor Constantine uh, became the new emperor. And, and what he did to end this period of, of intense persecution was, was that he married Christianity with paganism. He married the two. One writer said that Constantine put on the garb of Christianity over his pagan body and Christianity became the official religion. So what Constantine said when he took over from Emperor Diocletian, he said, it makes no sense we fight against these Christians. It makes no sense that we continue to war against them. Why? I guess because he saw that the blood of the martyrs were seed from the gospel. He realize that no matter how many Christians we kill, they, they still seem to be springing up. So he, he changed strategy and he said, let's not fight uh, against them anymore. Let, let's marry the two. Let's, let, let's marry the two. So that's what happened, family. And it's amazing how accurate the prophecies of the Bible are. And that's why I tell your family, this is proof that the word of God can be trusted. This is proof that we have a more sure word of of prophecy. Somebody ought to shout amen for the prophecies that we now have to help us and guide us in these last days. Oh, family, the word of God continues to the church of Smyrna. The, the word of God, the star of the book of Revelation says, he who has an ear, let him do what? Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. And now this, beloved, this is a very interesting uh, piece of theology here. And I, I, I'm going to give somebody a reason to shout that the promise here is he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. 
Now walk with me, family. Uh, uh, we're we're going to transition into a didactic portion here where I, I'm going to arm you with some uh, uh, some important pieces of information that, that, that will help you in your theology, in your study of God. The promise says, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now, when, when Jesus comes, family, there will be uh, four groups of people on earth. How many groups did I say? I can't hear you. How many groups did I say? Type it in the chat. Four groups of people when Jesus comes again. We're going to have the wicked dead and the wicked living. We're going to have the righteous living and the righteous dead. Are you hearing me tonight, family? I'm trying to help somebody tonight the way our God helped me. And the Bible tells us exactly what will happen to these four classes of people when Jesus comes. Can we take them one by one tonight? Give, give me a nod. Let me know you're there. Can we take them one by one tonight? When Jesus comes, clearly, those who are alive will be the righteous living and the wicked living. Those who are dead is clearly the wicked dead and the righteous dead. Now, the Bible tells us what will happen to the wicked dead. The Bible says, and I want you to write down this first text. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 5, the Bible says the rest of the dead, that's the wicked dead, they lived not again until the thousand years were expired or finished. Talking about the millennium. We're going to be spending a thousand years with Jesus Christ in heaven, we'll be judging the saints. We'll be reviewing the books during that period. I'll be talking about that toward the end of the series. So this is just a, a, a preview of what is to come. Praise the Lord. I told you, family, that seven, seven is like episodes in a, in a, in a show. Uh, if you miss one episode, you're going to miss a critical piece. So you need to binge watch this if you're coming late to the party. In Jesus' name, everything builds. Everything connects into a, and, and, and it forms a complete puzzle that gives you a beautiful picture of the star of the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ. So the wicked dead, the Bible says in Revelation 20 verse 5, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years was finished. So when Jesus comes, the wicked dead will remain dead. That's what the Bible is saying tonight. Let's talk about the righteous dead. Ah, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Ah, I get excited here because I lost my mother. I lost my father. Giants in the faith. And I know that by grace through faith, I will see them again. Somebody ought to say amen. The Bible says of the righteous dead, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. God and the dead in Christ shall do what? Shall rise first. So when Jesus comes with his retinue of angels, when Jesus comes again, when the eastern skies part and we see Jesus coming with his entourage, the order will be given. Call my saints from the grave. And the Bible lets us know that those who died in Christ, they will rise when Jesus comes. Somebody ought to say amen. So that takes care of the wicked dead and the righteous dead. Now the righteous living, let's go to that group. The righteous living, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians uh, 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 16, verse 17, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain, that's the righteous living. Somebody said, praise the Lord. The Bible says that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up 
to meet the Lord in the air. So what's happening when Jesus comes and, and, and the dead in Christ rise first? The Bible says the righteous living, they're going to defy gravity. We're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And the Bible says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody ought to say amen. That's a righteous living caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now the wicked living, ooh, what's going to happen to them? Good question, and I'm glad you asked. The wicked living, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, the wicked living will be consumed by the spirit of his mouth. The wicked living, the Bible says, will be destroyed by the brightness of Jesus' is coming. What's going to happen, family, is that the glory of Jesus Christ is going to be unleashed upon the earth when Jesus is coming with his retinue of angels and the only protection from that all-consuming glory is if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and you're covered by the blood of the Lamb. The blood prevails. Somebody ought to shout amen. The blood prevails. The blood surrounds and the blood covers and the blood envelopes. And if you're not, if you're not under the blood of Prince Emmanuel, you will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Somebody ought to say amen. Oh, family, that's what's going to happen to these groups. Whew. The Bible lets us know that the wicked dead. The Bible lets us know what's going to happen. Remember, we told you the rest of the dead, they live not again. But look what Revelation 20 verse 6 says. Blessed and holy Whew. is he that hath part. In the first resurrection, for the second death has no power. So what's going to happen, family, after the thousand years? And I'm going to go into this in detail. Uh, uh, after the thousand years is finished and, and, and the new Jerusalem uh, descends from heaven. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. The new Jerusalem descends from heaven. Uh, 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 the Bible lets us know uh, that Satan is going to muster up uh, all the forces, all the forces uh, of darkness who are, who are resurrected to see uh, 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 the Lamb of God clothed in the new Jerusalem. Jerusalem, they're going to say, let's take that city. Let's take that city. They're going to launch a, a, a brand new attack against the holy city that just descended. Satan is going to deceive the whole world again one more time. Remember what the Bible says, the rest of the dead live not again until uh, the thousand years was finished. So there's going to be another resurrection of, of, of the wicked uh, dead that remain dead. They're, 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 they're going to be uh, 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 resurrected so they can see see the glory of God. Remember, the Bible says, every knee shall bow. <laughs> every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee, every mouth is going to say, just and true are your ways, O God. So on the last day, Satan is going to muster up those forces and say, let's take the city. And on their way to taking the city, the Bible says, fire, then fire came down from God out of heaven and destroyed them. And that's the end of sin and Satan. The earth will be made new. The Bible says in Nahum chapter 1 verse 9 that affliction will not rise a second time. Sin will not rise a second time because the world would have seen that God is true. God is faithful and God is just. Somebody ought to say amen. And that's why the Bible here says uh, to, 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 to Smyrna as a promise for their faithfulness and as a future reward for them giving up their lives for Jesus Christ. And have you all on the altar of sacrifice laid? That's a question for somebody tonight. Have you all on the altar of sacrifice laid? And Jesus reminded Smyrna because they laid all on the altar for Jesus Christ. They marched into the lion's den and the lions ripped them apart. Hot lead was poured down their throats. They were ripped apart for their faith in Jesus Christ. But 
God had to give the church of Smyrna a promise just to let them know that I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. I'm still the star of the book of Revelation, walking in the midst of the seven lampstands. So Jesus reminded them, if you overcome, you will not be hurt by the second death because the second death has absolutely no power. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who sits, uh, takes away the sins of the world. Somebody ought to say amen. And if you look closely at the passage, family, I'm done. I'm done. But I got to give you a reason to shout. I, I, I have to give you your pain medication as you head over into your Wednesday. If you look closely at the passage and count the number of references to death and resurrection, you I, I don't know about you, but I find it very telling. You see, the star of the book of Revelation who experienced death was identifying with the dying members in, in Smyrna. But, but the hope continues. Put it in the chat. The hope continues. Uh, the hope continues uh, because I deliberately did not tell you uh, what the name Smyrna means. I did not tell you what Smyrna means. I told you the dates for Smyrna, but I deliberately did not tell you what Smyrna means. You see Smyrna uh, hidden, hidden in the name Smyrna is the word myrrh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hidden in the name Smyrna is the word myrrh. And myrrh is an anointing fragrance. And this is indeed prophetic because myrrh is the aroma of sacrifice. Ooh, it is the aroma of sacrifice. And remember the wise men brought gold, they brought frankincense, and they brought myrrh for Jesus. Gold for his kingship, frankincense for his worship, and myrrh for his death and bury burial and resurrection. So I hear Jesus saying to Smyrna, I hear him saying to Smyrna, as the aroma of their sacrifice, as the aroma of their pain, as the aroma of their poverty ascended before God as sweet incense. I hear Jesus saying to Smyrna, I recognize that smell. Ah, I recognize that smell smell, that smell, what smell? But then I reread the gospels in John chapter 11, verse 39, written by this same John. They were at the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus said, take away the stone. But Martha said, Martha said, Lord, by this time there is a stench. By this time there is a stench for he has been dead for days. Church, the last time Jesus smelled somebody on earth, Grace was activated in heaven and Lazarus was brought back to life. Huh? I see some of you looking at me. You're still not convinced. I have one more. Uh, I hear God the Father saying to Smyrna, I recognize that smell. That smell? What smell? It's the same aroma I detected after they anointed the broken, battered, bruised body of my only begotten son, Jesus, arrested on Friday for a crime he was innocent of, indicted for a felony that should have been mine, deserted and alone, no public defender to speak on his behalf. God said, I recognize that smell. That smell, what smell? For in John chapter 12, Mary anoints Jesus early with some expensive perfume one week before his burial. And Jewish custom has it that myrrh and aloes would have been wrapped in Jesus's grave clothes. So I hear God saying to Smyrna, I recognize that smell because early Sunday morning, grace was activated in heaven. Gabriel touched down on earth. That stone was rolled away and Jesus came forth holding the keys to death and the grave. Oh death, where is thy sting? And oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh, family, I'm done. Good night. But God told me to tell you that he's smelling you. He's smelling you. He's smelling you because you have been forgiven. And if you have been forgiven, put it in the chat. God is smelling me because I have been forgiven. Come here, Mark Twain. Help me preach this thing tonight. Mark Twain wrote that forgiveness is the fragrance, the flower leaves 
leaves on the heel of the one who crushed it. And how many times have we crushed Jesus? The Bible says each time we sin, we crucify him afresh. We crush Jesus when we stay in sin. We crush Jesus when we tell lies. We crush Jesus when we break the Sabbath. We crush Jesus when we hold on to tradition rather than holding on to the Thus saith the Lord, we crush Jesus every time we transgress, but each time the sweet fragrance of his blood clings to the heel of the one who crushed it. Somebody ought to give God praise tonight because I stand amazed at the awesome grace of almighty God. God is saying to somebody tonight, I know your sin stinks. I know your issues. There is a stench to it. I know things may be bad, but I'm smelling you. I'm smelling you because I'm walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks. You may feel as if you're all by yourself, but I'm smelling you. I know who you are, where you are, what you are, and why you are. I'm smelling you. I know your zip code. I know what's happening in your zip code. Your family may appear dead right now. Your finances may be on life support. Your relationships, no life may be left in it. But understand that I'm God and I'm God and I hold the keys to death and the grave. I can bring it back. Help me preach this thing tonight. Put it in the chat. God can bring it back. God is smelling me. I'm not over yet. My story is not done. God has hope for me and the future. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to give God praise. It's not over for you. It's not over for me. God is smelling me. God is smelling you. He knows your aroma. He can pick you out. Oh, praise be to God. Thank God for this reassurance tonight that we are never alone. God sees your pain. He sees your poverty. He knows everything about you. He's intimately acquainted with you the way he was acquainted with Smyrna. And tonight you must know because he's smelling you, he's cause, calling you tonight to make a stand for him. He's calling you to make a decision for him right now, right now, family, right now in the presence of the God who is smelling you, the presence of the God who died for your sins right now. He's saying, I want you to make a decision for me. That QR code is coming up in the chat. It connects to a decision card, family. It connects to a decision card. There's a link coming up in the chat as well. Right now, we're asking you if you're thankful for the blood, if you're thankful for grace, if you're thankful for second chances, if you're thankful that he did not throw the clay away. We want you to make a decision for Jesus Christ tonight. We have a baptism coming up on Sabbath, and we want you to check that first box because you know for too long you have been turning your back on the one who died for your sins. And God uh, God made sure that we would have had this series at this time so that you could have an opportunity to make it right with your God before it is eternally too late. Somebody ought to say amen in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my Lord, if you're over there on social media right now, put it out there, post it, put it on your timeline. God is smelling me. God is smelling you. Uh, hashtag uh, seven. Hashtag seven. Let the world know God is smelling you. God is smelling me. And if they ask you any questions, just share with them the link so it can all make sense in the presence of the Lord. What a God we serve on tonight. I know that God is going to reward somebody for watching the service tonight. Remember, God rewards those who seek after him. Amen. Didn't the Bible says you will seek me and find me after you've searched for me with all your heart. And tonight you're here tonight because you're searching. And I know that you're going to find him in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Dr. Williams, Dr. Williams, will you just hop off mute? And I just want you to pray a quick prayer of consecration, just one quick prayer of consecration for the individuals right now who are responding to the call they are responding to the magnetism of God's grace. They're responding to the pull. They know, they know for a fact that they have some situations that literally smell, but they know tonight that God, God is smelling them in Jesus' name. Pray for the believers even now.
Heavenly Father who art in heaven, O oh God, we are so thankful that sinful though we be, you love us. And once we turn to you, once we acknowledge our weaknesses and our sins, you will abundantly pardon. Oh Lord, we are so thankful for this message that we have been forgiven. We are so thankful for the message that even though our sins are stink, once we come to you and we are forgiven, Lord, we are now exhibiting the aroma of saints. Thank you so very much for grace. Thank you so very much for the, the blood that was sp spilt on Calvary's cross so that all of us, once we come to you, Lord, will not be cast out. In a special way tonight, I pray for every listener. I pray by those who have heard the message and ought to make that commitment to you tonight, they will not allow this night to pass without crying out, I yield, I yield, and surrender fully to you. Lord Jesus, trouble their consciences. I pray, Lord Jesus, that having heard the message tonight, they may understand that all hope is not lost. And once they come to you, you will in no wise cast them out. Father God, we know that we have wronged you. We know that we have sinned. But we also know that where sin abound, grace abound even more. And so it is in light of this reality tonight that we've come to you. As the decision cards have been posted, I pray that many, many souls, many, many persons will log on to that QR code and they will make a decision for Christ and for eternity. Father God, let tonight bring about the liberation of your people. Let tonight be the night where Satan totally is defeated in somebody's life. And as a result of that, souls may run to Jesus whom is in whom there is life eternal. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for Dr. Carol and the powerful way that is expounding your messages. Thank you for the book of Revelation and the messages of hope and the redemption that is found in it. Lord, we accept you tonight as Lord and Savior. And I pray that having gone through this series, having sat at the feet of Jesus throughout this series, those of us who have accepted you long ago, our lives, we will, our lives would, would take a turn for, for, for the better. We would take that introspective look and we'll hold fast to Jesus and make that determination like the people of Smyrna, that death before dishonor, we will not not let go of you. Bless everyone, we pray. Bless members, bless visitors. Help that all of us will come to the realization that we must turn our backs on the world and we, may, and we must say Jesus. Have your own ways tonight, Lord. And when you come, save us all in your kingdom because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the God. Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just thank God tonight for the aroma of saints. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank God tonight for the aroma of saints. It's not Armani. Hallelujah. It's not Isimiyaki. Praise the Lord. It is the blood of Jesus, the aroma of saints. May God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Wow. Wasn't that awesome, Dr. William? It was amazing. I feel better now. I, no, I want Jesus to smell me. <laughs> I, I am telling you, I, I want uh, him to smell that myrrh. Yes. You know, but isn't it ironic how um, the Smyrnians, he smelled them mm -hmm. because even their name reflected the myrrh. And the seed of the gospel is and was the blood of the martyrs. But the salvation of the gospel is also the blood. Yes, that's amazing. And you know, one of my takeaways was that persecution is a sign that we're on the right side of with God. So we should continue to stand our ground. Amen, amen. Preacher, I got one tiny question for you. We talk about they had to get a certificate to show that they had carried out their religious rituals. Not to God, but to Caesar. 
I find that interesting. You want to just say a little bit on that? Yeah, so 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 uh, it was just such an interesting time where they, they had to show demonstrable proof that they were um, uh, their allegiance was to the emperor of Rome and not Jesus Christ. And, and so once a year, they, they, they had to burn this incense and, and, and as proof, you know, you see how you walk around with your, with your social security card or, mm -hmm. or your passport yeah. or something just to, just to identify you. They had to walk around with that certificate um, to identify themselves as belonging to the emperor you know, belonging wow. to the emperor. And, 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 and it was just such a time. But what, what I find amazing was that, you know, these, these Christians, they, they didn't care about the certificate. They, they, they did not care about not being in compliance. You know, they, they, they were just not afraid to, to rock the boat. Not that they wanted mm -hmm. trouble, but it was a clear decision for them. It was an easy decision for them to make when, when faced with a choice between emperor worship or, or worship in Jesus Christ. It was just so easy for them. And, and, and they ripped up certificates. They walked away uh, uh, civil disobedience for Jesus Christ. <laughs> and they did not fear the consequences in Jesus' name. And as a result, um, you, you, you have read about the martyrs. So many of them were killed in so many horrible ways. Horrible ways. But uh, we're seeing tonight that God didn't abandon them. God has given them a crown of life, promised them a crown of life to God Amen. in the glory. So should, should, could we say that um, that's one of the reasons we have baptism, right? This public declaration, because if here we could have a certificate to show that, that this is the side we're on, then why not have our public baptism so people can see that this is the side we're on? Hold our baptismal certificate high. Walk with it, mm -hmm. maybe not literally, but walk with it. Amen. In our Amen. hearts. Amen. And then, you know, right now we have to walk around with our COVID um, <laughs> vaccination proof, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, how, how about we walk around with a digital copy of, of our baptismal certificate just to remind us of that decision that we, we, we belong to Christ and we have dedicated our lives to him. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I just think that it's something for us to think about and just know that the Bible says that there's a time of trouble that's uh, coming upon us in, the, uh, in this world that it's going to be so severe that, you know, there will be no historical precedent for it. Never before since there was a nation. And, 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 and that should cause us to um, become sober, sober, and decide by the grace of God, man, I, I'm going to stop playing church. I'm going to stop playing church. I'm going to get right with God. And not just God, by the way. I'm going to get right with his people. Because we saw with the church of Ephesus that, mm -hmm. that they, they, they hated evil, but, but they were characterized as the loveless church. They had no love. And we don't want that to be us. Remember, everything we learn about the, about the churches, it applies to us today because of its prophetic nature. So I'm just encouraging everybody by the grace of God, make sure that you just don't hate evil and, and, uh, and also hate the people of God. But make sure you hate deeds, hate deeds, not people, hate deeds, but make sure you love all God's people in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. That was so inspiring. Thank you so much, Pastor. And at this time, we'll call on Elder Wright to do our closing prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God and our Father, we want to thank you for the privilege that we could be on this platform tonight. Indeed, our hearts burn within us as we listen to the word from your man's servant. He has called us to come up a little higher with you because we recognize that your coming is near. And indeed, we ought to be prepared. We ought to be ready to receive you. I want to thank you for the word that helped to help others to, to be ready. Thank you for the inspiration from our pastor. Thank you, Lord, for, for the Holy Spirit of drawing us to you tonight. Help us, Lord, not to go back the way we came, but we will have a, a desire that we want to invite someone come tomorrow to be on the platform, come this week to join us on this platform so we can hear the word of truth, the word of life, the word of hope. Thank you, Lord, for those who are, those who are listening, those who are contemplating to give in their hearts to you. Give them no rest throughout this week, Lord. 
worry their conscience, let them know that this is the best decision and the only decision that they can make is to follow Jesus all the way, even in the water grave of baptism. Take over, Lord. Give us the assurance that you are with us and you are continuing to be with us. Wash us and anoint us. May as we hear this message, our hearts and our minds will, will glue together. Family will love each other. Church brothers and sisters, men and women will reconcile with each other. And the world will see a difference in us as Seventh-day Adventists. Thank you for shining through us, even in this dark world. Thank you for the hope of revelation. Thank you, Lord, for those who are making their decision right now to follow you. We pray that you will see their decision for time or for eternity. Give us a blessing in our home. Bless our family. May we encourage each other in righteousness as we seek to continue to hear from you with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Please join us tomorrow night where we'll discuss the topic, the doctrine that God hates. Mm. Has it always been this way? Well, even from the beginning, men hated Jesus. Even though he did nothing but love them and teach them and heal them, they nailed him to a cross. And they thought they had killed him, but they only set him free to live in the hearts of people like you and me who believe in him. Then came the apostles, and most of them were killed for telling other people about Jesus. But by that time, it was too late. There were hundreds of people who believed in Jesus. So they tortured them and killed them, and they even left their bodies to rot as an example to other people. But the church kept right on growing, watered by the blood of these precious saints. What, Dad, did they want to die? No. They didn't want to die. I mean, many of them had children just like you that they had to leave behind. But they were forced to make a choice. I mean, they could choose to live this one life here on earth and reject Jesus and be damned. Or they could choose to believe in the words of Jesus and live forever. I think I understand. Here, maybe this will help you understand. I have heard how Christian long ago were brought before a tyrant's throne and they were told that he would spare their lives if they would renounce the name of Christ. Son of God, they would not deny the great angelic choir sings. I can almost hear their voices ring. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all.
is coming I pledge allegiance to the land You've got to remember that it wasn't always this way. I mean, my dad could even pray in school. Of course, they took that away from him. And then it became incorrect for us to believe in the Bible. And after that, they just stripped our right to worship away from us. And we, we quietly stood by. But son, I hope that you're never put in a position that you have to choose between your faith and your life. But if you are, I know which choice you're going to make. Because I know that Jesus lives inside of you. In the meantime, just pray like I taught you how to. And take care of your mom. Remember that God is the Father of the fathers. I